Hey guys, I'm gonna go ahead and start this. We'll probably end up making a few of these videos. So I've come up with a way to make this a lot easier. Since I know a lot of you guys want to run these type of rings, because they are gorgeous. So this is this was made in the early 1900s in Manhattan. Vincent's good at being a camera guy. <laughs> he can get you the good shots. Yes. So what this is, this is a Master Hub, early 1900s Art Nouveau piece. And what makes these difficult is the hump that's in the center. So I'm going to help you guys. I devised a system so that you guys can actually press these a lot easier. So the first part of the system is the template. So you can see, you said we're going to choose one of these here. This one's a little small, so we're going to choose that one. The way you would do it, because you're not going to have a master hub, you're going to have your template, is you're going to look for the one that fits. So this is the one, the middle one is the one that fits. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my piece of metal, lay it down here, and I'm going to scribe my lines, and then I'm going to saw it out. So let's get to it. After we do that, then I'm, we're going to get into the pushers and the forces that, we're, that come in the kit. So it's all coming in a little kit. This is the special one that we've made. This is just my prototype. Your finished one will look a lot nicer. So let me get over here to my bench and let's do some sawing. Okay, so I'm gonna scribe a line. I'm gonna use this, just a random burr. If you've got a sharp thingy, that'd be the way to do it. And you're just gonna Grab the line. There's my line. What do you guys think? Can you guys see it? All right. So, next thing you're going to do. You're not going to lose your template. It's going to come in the kit. So hop on the side of me so they can see. They can watch in amazement as I <laughs> saw. So you're going to want to get nice and close to the edge. Oh, there I can see now. We have a few people? Oh, yeah, we got 24. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, this will be a lot quicker than the last one because I spent all night thinking about how to make this so that I can make the parts affordably and easy for you guys to use. So I'm using 14 gauge. Um, I would recommend, well, you could do them, so I would recommend doing them solid, which would mean probably 12 gauge, because you'll probably do these in silver, so use 12 gauge.
half of it. Go again. Once you get your blank cut out, I'll show you all how the tools work and how to get it pressed in there. I'm impressed by your straight line saw. It's my magic saw. <laughs> All the skills in the saw. <laughs> oh, I jinxed it. Yes, you did. <laughs> All right, let's see. What do I got for blades? I would have broken a few blades by now. Nah, it just takes more practice. You just haven't spent decades sawing. <laughs> I think when I was your age, I already had four years of sawing under my belt. Uh -huh. Of all day sawing. <laughs> Let's put some... All right, there we go. We're back. Sorry guys. <laughs> Many people are saying the saw is magic. Yeah, it's just magically breaking blades is what it's doing today. <laughs> I jinxed it. <laughs> you gotta scooch back a little bit, dude, I think. I think that's why I'm breaking blades. <laughs> oh, I see. At this weird angle here. <laughs> I'm going to blame the kid for breaking blades. <laughs> All right. That might yeah, keep yeah. going for the flux, even though it's... <laughs> Sorry it's taking me so long guys. I'm gonna do this exactly how you're gonna do it. But you guys probably break less blades. <laughs> Gauge copper are you using? 14. You shouldn't use copper for a ring though. Don't do it. <laughs> You're going to need 12 gauge silver to do this. There we go. All right. So we got it roughed out. Because next step, we're going to anneal it.
before anybody asks, it's the rosebud torch that comes with the Smith Little Torch. <laughs> Just an accessory tip. There's some people asking why not to make the ring out of copper. It's because your finger will turn green. <laughs> Nobody buys copper rings. It's a terrible idea. Uh, got some flux on it. I got to clean off. Uh -oh. Got some flux on it. I notice you always put your hand to the metal when annealing. Does that help you gauge when it's done? Yeah. I can see it because the light is too bright and I can't tell if it's if it's red or not. Okay. Come on over here. Oh, you want the chair? No, I'm all right. I'm a big so boy. we're gonna put this right on top like that. And our first pressing, we're gonna get it to shape first, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is use this. This is just a half, piece of half round. Throw space under it. Balance it up there. They're nice and large. So I screwed it up. It went off a little bit. Let me see if I can readjust it. No. I'm gonna cut another one. Sorry guys. You don't want to flatten that one out? Just no, press. I put it, put the dent in and I moved it all the way to one side. So we start over. Okay. Sorry guys. This time I'll use the bandsaw. <laughs> so don't rush what you're doing. That will teach you what I just did. I screwed it up and I wasted all my time and yours. This time I'm going to use layout die so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. So you'll get that down there. Let's go cut it with a bandsaw.
How do you get the blue off when finished? It just burns off. It won't. It won't stay. Let's nail this one. My Smith Little didn't come with a rosebud tip. Is it from Paige? Those don't work with disposable propane, do they? I have no idea. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> this one says Smith on it. So if you didn't buy an original, there's you can buy counterfeit Smith torches out of China. They're really cheap. They're like twenty dollars, and they burn up in your hand. So be careful that you didn't put, you, make sure you bought a real one. The counterfeit ones are very dangerous. They're all over Amazon and eBay. And I see other companies selling them as if they're real. Because the, re the Smiths, I think the actual ones are like $200. And the counterfeits are like $20. I bought a counterfeit one to check it out. <laughs> and it leaks gas all over the place. And it burns back into the... So what I do is I shade it from the, the light so I can see how it's glowing red. I want to make sure it's hot. Or how hot it is. <laughs> so if you don't have one of those uh, little band saws, it's going to make your life a lot better. Alright, let's do it. Okay, where was we? Where was we? <laughs> We're going to dry our blank off. We're going to get it nice and centered. And this time, I think what I'm going to do, because you don't have, a, if you get it crooked, you're, you're not going to get your shank right. So you're going to get it nice and centered. This time, I'm going to actually just press it with this. Just a piece of urethane to get it started. That's definitely how you want to do it. <laughs> this is definitely how you want to do it. Okay? Then, you're going to set this on top. Just give it a bump to set it. Next step, we're gonna put the urethane in there. I'm gonna put it this direction. No, I'm gonna go this direction with it. I'm gonna use a little piece of urethane. Set your die in there. Any chance you might make those half round steel pushers available at some point, Kevin? That's what this whole video is about. <laughs> this whole entire video is about the kit that I made so that you can press these things real easily. This is another part of the kit. So in the kit, you're going to get half round pusher. Then you're going to get, this is the critical one. What this one's going to do is it's going to push the metal up on the shoulders and over. Okay? So that's the next step that we're going to do. I'm going to go in with this pusher. And I'm going to go ahead and use a piece of urethane. If you were pushing solid, this would be much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and push in with a little bit of urethane and this here. But if you were pushing solid, like if you had a piece of 10 gauge or 12 gauge metal, it would be easier. So just get it balanced in there. Go ahead and finish it. Yep. And so. Okay. 
Oh, nice. Okay, so now we've pushed up into our shoulders. Now I'm going to go ahead and push it solid. So there's that. Now I'm going to push the entire top down with this. Oh, one more thing. Always use that <laughs> to keep your center down. You don't want the center popping up, okay? It's all mushed in there. Let's take it off. Take a look. See what we got. Pretty good, huh? Wow. Impressive. Little light right there, but we can take care of that. But it's pretty much there. So let's go ahead and saw this stuff off of it and bend it up into a ring. So then I'm going to go over what's in the kit. So you saw how much easier that was than previous times we've done this. And it's because I created special tooling to fit. I was trying to avoid doing it because we <laughs> have, I actually had to make some more dies that we're going to actually forge the tooling with because I can't put it in a, in a machine and you know, if I CNC machine all the parts to fit, it's going to be really expensive. So I'm trying to keep them as affordable as we can. got questions uh, let's see or is it all shocking on now <laughs> yeah it's gonna be available maybe today if someone's around that can take a picture of the parts and put it up, it can be available today. I don't know if there's anybody who knows how to do that though. So you can see how we did that in one annealing not three or four and how the ring looks so much nicer than what i did the other day <laughs> oh yeah i'm not saying this ring die is available now yeah uh, so you can see she says we'll get the rest of the kit up as soon as possible cool so yeah i'll see if danielle can put it up if mom can put it up <laughs> Yeah, so if you're going to do this, you're definitely going to want to use at least... I wouldn't go any thinner than 14 gauge for your metal. You're going to need it. 16 is too thin. You're going to need 14. 12 would probably be ideal. I like my rings to be pretty heavy. So... Curious what an estimate in solid silver would be and what folks price, uh, would price the ring at in retail. Um, it would probably weigh half an ounce, so you would have 
Uh, we're gonna have twenty dollars in it, roughly. You figure about twenty bucks in metal. So I would think sixty-five to seventy-five dollars, maybe a hundred bucks. If if you do a really nice job, depending on if you put what kind of stone you put in it. You can see it doesn't take very long. You'd have a lot more time in fabricating a ring than you will striking one. Even doing it all by hand like this. And before someone asks, no, I can't make a pancake die. <laughs> just too thick and the air in the cross sections are too small down at the ring shank area what about an FSS die? nope sorry guys all right so there's our ring looks pretty good <laughs> Let's, uh, you know, it doesn't really need to even be pressed again. My top here, this crown, could use a little more. Um, I don't know. I'd be putting a bezel on top of it anyway. I wouldn't be leaving it flat. So, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's round it up. So, the next thing, the way I'm going to round it up, since you've all got a press, obviously, if you're doing this. <laughs> you're going to use your ring rounding former. That's interesting. I didn't think of setting a stone to that. I thought it was a signet ring. No, no. It could be a signet ring, but they were, they're for stones. It's just a flat platform. Played out. All right. Can they see? Yep. I've never seen a ring formed with a hydraulic press. <laughs> really? Yeah, I've always just done it with a ring banjo. You? Oh, you haven't seen it? Yeah. Oh. These are tough. <laughs> They're super hard. Because what you need to do is you got to get that crown bent. And that's why we we're doing it with the hydraulic press. I see. All right, let's round it up with the ring mandrel. So I didn't anneal this. If you're doing it in silver, I would probably anneal. So the sides of this shank are pretty much solid. The only hollow space is right up underneath there. So it's a very strong piece. That's the only hollow space. The sides of the shank are pretty much solid. So if you hit it with the leather mallet, they're not gonna collapse. I'm probably going to end up annealing this. It's pretty strong. I can't really move it. Yeah, I got to anneal it, guys. I was hoping to skip a step. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I got to anneal it. 
I just can't bend that top. If you were gonna make, if you were trying to make money at this, I would probably make three or four at a time. I wouldn't be making one of them at a time. There it is, nice and red. Just gonna go quench it. Show them some dyes. All right. Some more the P.M. Watkins collection. I love that piece. That's awesome. I love this wing here. Alright, are you ready? I'm ready. I'll get my chair back. Thank you. So. Oh, yeah. This bends easier. <laughs> Just with your fingers. Yeah. working great. I'm gonna go ahead and make it the size that it comes out of the thing at. It's an 11 and a half, about an 11 and a half is what size it makes. Yeah, annealing it helps. For sure. Let me, uh, let me find my little disc sander and we will sand it and solder it together and then round it up perfectly. If you don't have one of these little discs, get them. Get one. They're awesome. So you want to get your joint nice and square. Lovely. Oh, my foot keeps hitting it. All right, that looks great. Solder. Is everyone bearing with me while we do this? Oh yeah. Sorry, your mom's in the way. So you're gonna grab your solder. I'd like a disc sander. Which brand or name? There are so many attachments it can get overwhelming. I don't even know. It's just a sanding disc attach, like just a mandrel, sanding disc mandrel. And it goes in your flex shaft. They work great though. I think it's 3M. Oh, that makes those things? Yeah. Oh. I mean, I, I literally, I have a bin full of discs. I use whatever I can find. I mean, I don't pay much attention to the brand. They're all the same, really. All right, give me a little space here. <laughs> Guap on some flux. Sure, and flux the whole thing. All right. I'm running out of bench. Need more space. <laughs> All I would do is just make a bigger mess. So we've got a brand new fresh pot of pickle. Kick this thing into high gear. Enjoy. Done. So we're gonna actually finish it though. I'm gonna throw this in the pickle. Vincent's gonna entertain you with some cool dye pictures. Oh boy. Let's see, let's do something a little different. Use the tops to powder jars for like face powder. Most of these are from the 40s and 50s. 
We're going to have a whole bunch of really cool ones. I think there'll be about a hundred of them coming. They're the lids for the uh, chewing tobacco cans. I just yes. talked to, to Eddie and they're shipping them to us here. And that might leave tomorrow. So Boy. Yeah, so there's a whole pallet of them. <laughs> These are interesting ones. I love this giant cigarette case. Yeah, so Eddie's going to send us all those. They should be pretty nice. I you know there's there's like Christmas ones, and then there's, um, of course, your outdoorsy ones. <laughs> I think there's even a monster truck one, I swear to God. <laughs> so, there's our ring. It looks really nice. Let's, uh... Let's file up the bottom. Actually, let's do this like we mean business. So, Boy. Yeah, I'll hit that with a file real quick. And then we're going to go to the buffer. Yeah, once this thing's all filed up, this is a... You know, this isn't wouldn't be a bad weight ring if it was in sterling. I would definitely don't don't make a fine silver ring unless you don't want to wear it every day. Obviously, you can see the big silver solder joint because it's a copper ring. So, it's looking pretty nice. I want to bring it in real close and show them where we got to trim and file. See these edges here? All that stuff's got to come off. Is it raining? I think it's yep. raining. Yeah. That's kind of cool that it's raining. If you haven't seen, we've got a water problem here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go after this thing with a uh, sanding wheel. Got it. <laughs> So then after this, I'm going to show you all the tooling again and exactly why we made it this way and all the little details. So you can see how you could do this whole ring just with your sanding disc. The detail's great on this thing. It turned out really nice. See how this sanding disc just takes it down really quick? So this, the way we just did it is about as close as you're going to get to doing it with a force and a drop hammer. So we're... Is it getting hot? Um, I don't know. I don't feel my fingers. How does it feel, Vincent? 
<laughs> a little bit hot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's hot. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's probably hot. What you need are big, thick calluses of doing this forever. <laughs> That looks pretty nice. It's not too shabby. Let me get the inside real quick. It's almost time for a new hand piece. This one's wearing out. Yeah. Oh. I kill these things. All right. So. Now it's hot. <laughs> I'm not going to make too big a deal about, you know, getting this thing perfect. It's kind of just a sample, but it really, it worked out really well. So if you were to strike this solid, you wouldn't really need any urethane at all. The only reason we used any urethane at all on this ring was because it's hollow up underneath the, the head here. That's hollow, but just barely hollow. So let's go buff it real quick so you can kind of see the detail and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about the, the kit. my wife. It's got a platinum bezel and it's in rose gold. It turned out really nice. coppers out there that don't tarnish or at least they won't turn your finger green. The only problem is they're kind of toxic. Oh. Yeah. You've got your beryllium copper. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So they're a lot stronger than regular copper. And then you have your tungsten copper and your tellur tellurium copper I don't believe is toxic. I have some of it. It's really cool stuff. So there it is. Wow. Isn't that great? Looks real nice. Yeah. And if I did spend a little more time on the sides and whatnot, it would have come out better, but it's not bad. But it, you know, the 14 gauge gives you just enough metal to work with. You don't have room to really screw up. You know what I mean? There's not a lot of extra. So if you're <laughs> careful, you could get by with 14 gauge. I prefer to have a little more metal to work with, but it's not too it's not too bad. No. How's it look in the picture? Real nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's real good. Yeah. Got my pinky ring. All right, let's look at the kit. So 
Um, there's this. What, oh, what did we do with the uh, template? Template. It's over on your bench. Oh, great. Right. Got sucked into the void. It couldn't have gone far. Really? We can't find it? Oh my god. Here it is. Oh. <laughs> All right. So this is what's going to come in your kit. You're going to get the rings. This is the this kit will fit all the rings. Well, all the ones that you see in the pictures. And then I'll make some additional changes if I have to for other rings. But you get this component here. What this does the hardest part is to get these shoulders right here. So that's what this does. It pushes your shoulders down. And this gets the very bottom of the ring right in here. You'll probably want to, if you're going to strike solid, you don't have to, you don't have to use a piece of urethane. If you're going to strike hollow, you want to put a little piece of urethane down there and drive it in. That will give you the very bottom. Then you'll change out the die, go to this one, and then your final step will be across the back, like that. So with every kit, you're gonna get this, this, and this, and this. So you got four pieces. And this should cover, if we need, this will be for this set of rings, the ones that we've got right now. This will cover 90% of the rings that we're ever going to sell will be this template here. And these should do just about all of it. Obviously, this is the one I handmade. Yours will look better. <laughs> it will be finished differently. But it'll look the same profile. The exact same profile is what you'll have. Okay? And uh, mm -hmm. this block of steel. And then you. I'm going to make this video over and over and over again <laughs> until everybody is a master at this okay all right and this is what your impression dial usually look like they may vary a little bit sometimes depending on what steel we have available sometimes we press them into this sometimes we press them into this it just depends what's available um well they work for the dragon rings yes they will this will work for your dragon rings because we make this have the dragon rings have the same profile right here let me go let's go get let's go look at some rings and i'll show you what they won't work for but the chances of us running those is pretty slim because there some of that stuff is just ridiculous so what we're looking for when i make these rings i'm looking for a certain let me get the original when i make these i'm looking for Smaller scale stuff. They've all got very similar profiles for here, the height. I'm looking for things that are not super deep. There's stuff on here that, that's bananas. That isn't happening. I'm not making those. <laughs> not going to do it. Not going to do it. Something like this. Absolutely. That's an easy one to make. Something like this. A square one. Absolutely low profile, not super deep. Where's some insane ones, Vincent? This one, this oh, one. Oh yeah, yeah, look at, look at these. Yeah, <laughs> never, I'm not making those. They're just ridiculous. Very difficult to make, very difficult to produce after the fact. Something like this, perfect. Similar profile, actually same exact profile. So what I've done is I've made a master hub 
that will push this profile. And then I've made a reverse of it so that we can create the other side. That way you can easily do these. The next thing we're going to do at a later point, if I feel like I want to punish myself, <laughs> we'll do, Ooh. I will set up to do the half shanks. So I'll show you how to do a half shank. So these, these are a pain. I like these full shank ones better, but you know, we, we can definitely do a half shank ring setup and I can create a force and that way you'll have better luck with those mermaid rings. Those are pretty cool. I think they're in here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, we have got a ton. Right, see, like, oh, when wow. you guys see this kind of stuff somewhere out in the world, don't buy it. These are ridiculous. <laughs> Someone sent that to me. They thought we would actually press that. This one... What is that? Some sort of double-headed eagle. But yeah, what we're looking for is stuff that's easy to use. And that's that's where we're going to focus. Try to keep things not... Oh, here's, see, here's the dragon ring. Check it out. Same profile. So my the force that I made will work just fine with this dragon. You'll be able to do it. Awesome. No problem. Um, yeah, later on we'll start working our way into these. But I want to see, since we've got a good system now, I, I really hope you guys will at least a, a try to make some of these rings. And uh, it's not hard. You saw me do it. It was so easy. I could do it. <laughs> I think that's probably a wrap. Yeah, right, here's our... Oh yeah, the former. The former. So there's our former. So we mount, we form every ring. We took them. I bet they're in here. Yeah, but they're shipping them. I bet they're shipping them. Oh, there's some. Here's a couple. So this is. Take a look. It's gonna fit. They're all the same. They're gonna fit. So this kit that I'm building, or that we built, it's gonna fit. All right. And you will be able to produce these rings fairly, fairly easily. I hope. <laughs> I hope. So let's go over it one more time for people who just joined us. Has anyone just joined us? <laughs> yeah, numbers have flipped around. <laughs> so what you're getting is this, this, block of steel, and a pusher. And with these four items you will successfully make a ring you will also want to get a ring rounding thing for your bracelet former kit they're in stock we made a ton of them they fit all the styles so this just happens to be the old style frame but the new one has two posts and then you can but it'll fit it no problem and i think that's it all that's right. all she wrote <laughs> here's what we made so if you just joined the video and you want to see this getting made, it turned out nice. Yeah. All right, guys, take it easy.